Hey guys, welcome back. Matty Graham here from Exponential Performance Coaching. In this video, I just want to take a look and expand on our VO2 max and anaerobic threshold theme that we've been running for the last couple of weeks. And today, what I want to do is focus on training. How do we train to target these two aspects? Now, you'll remember VO2 max, I said in the first video, is not that trainable. Okay? So it doesn't have a big degree that you can train it, but anaerobic threshold does. In saying that though, when you train your VO2 max, it's really important to do this sort of training because it just tunes it up a little bit. And that can make quite a big difference, okay? Just being doing the high intensity work associated with this. And in saying that as well, you can never just train one aspect of an energy system. Okay, so when you do VO2 max intervals, it will improve threshold as well. And again, when you target your anaerobic threshold, there will be some residual effect that will affect your VO2 max as well. The big thing to remember with the body is it's not all these separate boxes, it's a whole system that integrates together. We just break them down when it comes to training, to research, because it's sort of easier to describe, and we sort of break it down, work on different aspects, and then build it all back into the big picture. So when we target both of these areas, the typical form we use is interval training, because you can't really do training at this intensity for too long because of the intensity it requires. So the biggest thing for your VO2 max and your anaerobic threshold uh, development is the work to recovery ratio. This is critical and it changes the intervals dramatically. So when we're doing our VO2 max intervals, we want a one to one work to recovery ratio. That means if we work for two minutes, we have two minutes of recovery. If we work for one minute, we have one minute of recovery. On the other hand, with our anaerobic threshold, we want at least a two to one work to recovery ratio. So this means if we work for say four minutes, we have two minutes of recovery, so we have half the amount of time. Why this is important is that when you're training your VO2 max, you want the work to be done really, really hard at a high intensity. Remember VO2 max, that's a maximum intensity. And our recovery wants to match the time so that we are almost fully recovered before the next effort. If we were to have this sort of scenario, what would happen is we'd get tighter and tighter and tighter and not able to get to the intensity that we sort of want. So an example of a VO2 max session could be this. And what I'm going to draw here is sort of like the heart rate trace that you'd see on your Garmin um, at the end of a session. So say we've got a small warm up here and then we may do, so I think that's five, and we steady and then. So what we've got here is say five times one minute intervals. So short intervals, short recoveries with one minute of recovery. So what this is allowing us to do is work at a really high intensity and the intensity that we need to work is zone five which is up here. And the short high intensity bouts, what we're aiming for is to accumulate time up in this training zone. Then we have short recoveries, but they're not short relative to how long we work, they're exactly the same. We want to keep the interval short so not too much lactate's produced. We're not worried about lactate, we don't want to accumulate it like we will later on in our anaerobic threshold. We want to keep that down so that our work rate can stay high. And we want to let that body recover between the intervals. If we were to cut that in half, say 30 seconds, what would happen, I'll draw it in blue here, is we'd start to fatigue and our intervals would no longer be up in the effective training zone. So the key thing with VO2 max development is an interval 
that's somewhere between one to four minutes with the one to one work to recovery ratio and really focusing on the intensity. Now as with all intervals, you don't just do one session and that's all you ever do. What you want to do is progress it as with all of your other training. So you may start with this session five one minute intervals. So that'll be two sets. So then they'll have a bit of a rest here or a steady and then they'll do five more. And then you may progress to two minute intervals and then three minute intervals and four minute intervals as your training progresses through the season. So this is not just a be all and end all of the session. Now, let's have a look at anaerobic threshold session. So again, this is the heart rate trace. What we've got is maybe a bit of a warm up and then going into our interval sets. And as you can see, these intervals are a bit longer. Usually for anaerobic threshold intervals, somewhere between four to even 15 minute plus is really good. So to train your anaerobic threshold, you want to train at or around anaerobic threshold and clock up the time in that zone. So the zone that we want to be working in is here would be zone four. Okay, if you remember back to last week's video, that's where we want to be, zone four. And you'll notice with the recovery is the, based on this two to one, the half as long as our work time. And that is key because in zone four, when you work in that zone around your anaerobic threshold, this is the time that lactate is increasing exponentially for, to fatigue. So you're building up a lot of lactate in your blood. And then we have a short recovery period. So we allow partial recovery, so we're still able to get up into this zone again. But it's so it's short enough that we don't decrease all the lactate or, or get rid of all the lactate out of our blood. Because in this next interval, we're going to jack that up even higher. Then we're going to have that short recovery again, and we're going to jack that lactate up even higher. So by the end of our interval session, our blood lactate is higher than it ever would have been before, even if we were just to bring it up and try and hold it in this zone. Because what would happen is we'd start to fatigue and it'd become a waste of time. So that's why the intervals are important. So the key thing with anaerobic threshold training is to increase that blood lactate, hold it as high as we can or as long as we can so the body gets used to dealing with it and it gets better at managing it. So that's the key thing. That can be done through sort of long sustained intervals, or if you're in a sport that is high, repeated high intensity, what you can do is again use short repeated bursts that again will accumulate lactate. But for most people watching this video, you'll be multi-sporters, triathletes, cyclists, and it's that more sustained effort that's going to improve your performance the most. So there you have it. Key thing with VO2 max intervals, one-to-one -one work to recovery, really focusing on high intensity, maximal efforts. And then anaerobic threshold, two-to-one work to recovery ratio, so we work longer to build up that uh, blood lactate and other metabolic byproducts, so our body gets better at dealing with them and slightly longer intervals. If you've got any questions, keep them coming because I'm going to keep giving you the good information so you can train harder and smarter.